nice of you to give me a shout. At least I know my radio's working. I haven't used this uh, little handheld for a fortnight or more. I'm just beginning to wonder whether I'd uh, change the setting and it wasn't accessing the receipt. Anyway, let me say, enjoy your day and uh, hope to work to you tomorrow evening. From G-Zero ACK. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about an exciting SDR transceiver called the Langstone project. Now this is an experimental project to produce a simple VHF, UHF and microwave SDR transceiver operating on SSB, CW, FM and AM. Now the creator of this project, G4EML, was inspired by the popular ports down amateur television system, which also runs on a Raspberry Pi. Now currently there is only one set of hardware which is supported and the minimum hardware that you'll need will be an RPI4, an Adam Pluto, the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen, a USB audio dongle and a wired USB mouse. Now the USB audio dongle which you can use is just a generic audio device which you can purchase from eBay or Amazon for around $5. I've tested a couple of different USB audio dongles and they both work fine. Now, as mentioned before, you will need a wired USB mouse. And you may be asking, why do you need a mouse if you're using a touchscreen? Well, the mouse can be used as it is, or you can dissect it and use the main board within your transceiver. The mouse buttons act as a kind of left and right. The scroll wheel is then used as a form of rotary controller. Now, here's a diagram of how someone used the insides of a mouse to connect it to the front panel of their SDR transceiver. The movement on the mouse is however not used. So let's take a quick look at the features which provide a nice touch screen so all of the buttons on the screen you just tap them and then use the mouse to change the value. The Langstone SDR transceiver is all mode, noting that FM is currently only narrowband FM. The supported frequency range will be that of your Pluto SDR so if you have it modified for 47 megahertz to 6 gigahertz it will transmit and receive throughout those frequencies. Now while in receive mode, it also provides a nice band scope with waterfall. This also lets you view 20 kilohertz either side of the center frequency for other activity. As you probably would have guessed, the output power is quite low, but here's a breakdown of what to expect on each of the bands. Now when it comes to supporting multiple bands, the Langstone project provides a nice band switching technique by the use of Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. As you change bands, the state of certain GPIO pins will change. This means you can use these to control relays to switch the Pluto's output and input to different filters and amplifiers. Now, if you're going to be using this project on air, then it's highly advisable to incorporate a filter system for the band in which you want to use. This not only protects amplifiers from having spurious frequencies and amplifying harmonics, it's also useful on the receive side to implement a band pass and a frequency rejection. Other GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi can be used to control the PTT, CW key and the TX output to turn on and off amplifiers that you may have in line. One other cool feature is that if you need to remote mount the Pluto SDR, say far away from the Raspberry Pi, you can also use the GPI pins on the Pluto to control filter and amplifier switching. Therefore, you won't need to run long wires from the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi all the way to where your Pluto is. So let's take a look at the actual hardware I'm going to use in this test. So here we have a USB mouse, USB audio dongle, the Adam Pluto and a 7 inch touchscreen with a Raspberry Pi 4 already installed behind it. So with my 7 inch touchscreen I've installed it in this case just so that I can neatly attach the Pi 4. The screen itself is connected to the Pi via ribbon cable and to power the screen we have red and black wires taking 5 volts from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. Now one thing to mention is that while working in this configuration, especially with the back plastic cover on, the Pi 4 gets extremely warm. So for prolonged use, I would definitely recommend that you use some cooling fans. Another point to mention is that if you're using this case, then make sure that you put your SD card into the Pi before screwing it all together, because once it's assembled, the ribbon cable will be in the way and you won't be able to remove it. We'll also talk about imaging the SD card shortly. Now attaching the Pluto, USB mouse and USB dongle is quite easy. 
It's just a case of simply plugging them in into the Pi 4's USB sockets. Now that we have the hardware, let's go ahead and grab the software. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the Langstone Project GitHub page and find the link to a specific version of Buster Lite for the Pi. Now Buster Lite is the operating system that we're going to be using. As stated on the GitHub page, this specific version has been tested working for the Langstone project. Newer versions may work, but they haven't been tested. So once you've downloaded this image, you'll need to burn this to an SD card using an application such as Etcher. Once you have imaged your SD card, we need to create a blank file called SSH and place this in the boot drive on the SD card. This will ensure that SSH is enabled when the Pi 4 boots up. Now the Pi will also require an internet connection so that you can install the Langstone project files. You can either create a WPA supplement file and drop it into the same location as the SSH file so that it connects to your Wi-Fi, or you can use an ethernet cable plugged into the Pi. Now with everything plugged in, we can now apply power to the Pi. Once it's booted, you'll need to know its IP address. You can either use an IP scanner application or just log into your router and find the Pi's IP address in the list of attached devices. We then need to use an application called PuTTY to SSH into the Pi. Using the Pi's IP address and port 22, we can connect to the Pi over the network. The username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. So once logged in, we need to download and install the Langstone project files. So first we need the installer file. Copy and paste this line into the PuTTY window and press enter. Once this is downloaded, we now need to change the permissions on this file so that we can execute it. So now run the install file using this command and then go and make yourself a cup of your favorite beverage as this will take a good few minutes. Now once it's finished installing, the Pi will reboot and you'll be presented with a Langstone project loading screen. Now if all is well, you'll then see the main user interface for the Langstone project SDR transceiver. So there we had a QSO going on the two meter handbands and to receive this I had my dual band collinear attached to the RX port of the Pluto SDR. Now navigating the GUI is fairly easy. You simply tap on one of the green buttons to change its setting. The left and right mouse buttons will also change the cursor location that you can see under the frequency. You can then just use the scroll wheel to adjust that value. Now the buttons along the bottom are all activated by touching them. We can select the band, the mode, enable duplex mode and change some settings like filters, mic gain, SSB gain and things like that. Now if you're not using the Pi's GPIO pins for controlling the PTT, then you do have a touch PTT button down there on the bottom right, which when tapped enables or disables TX mode. It changes red when in TX mode and then obviously in green when you're receiving. From this main GUI, you can also adjust the main volume and squelch when using FM. Now to clarify, the RX audio will come from the attached USB sound dongle and your microphone TX audio will also be fed into that same USB sound dongle. We also have an S meter there on the top left, which provides a nice indication of the received signal strength. So there you go guys, that's the Langstone SDR transceiver project utilizing the Adam Pluto SDR. For me, I will be making this into a complete project with filters and amplifiers for various bands. I'll probably think about 2 meters, 70 centimeters, 2.4 gigs, and definitely 4 meters, which is 70 megahertz, as that's supported over here in the UK. Don't worry though, I will document and record my progress with this project build and share it with you guys on this YouTube channel. 
I'd also like to thank my current patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis. And if you're interested in supporting me, you can find the link down in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe as I have a ton of interesting radio related topics to cover over the coming weeks. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.